70 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. All right, almost five minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. One of the cancers that I have a hard time just wrapping my head around, I just don't understand it. It's leukemia. And maybe I don't understand it because it's blood, right? So it's a liquid. I I can imagine, like, with, uh, with... like the liver, right, or the or the lung, right, or yes. But I just don't understand quite leukemia, and it's okay that I don't because we have people in this world who do. Uh, Dr. Muhammad Hassan Imam is on the phone. He's an expert in the treatment of lymphoma and leukemia. He's a researcher and currently practicing in Orlando. Is that right? In Orlando, yep. at the Florida Cancer Specialist and Research Institute, uh, is talking to us about the treatment of lymphoma and leukemia. Doctor uh, Imam, I know you have a TV thing, so we have to be real quick with you. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, are you in Orlando right now? I am. I'm, oh. I'm Orlando, born and raised in, in this area. Oh, excellent. Okay, and you're, you've got a TV thing. Can we watch you? Well, what show are you going to be on? <laughs> uh, I actually don't know. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> there's lots of, there's, lots of there's, there's a couple. <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah. So tell, tell me about this. Is there a tumor involved with leukemia? You know, you're asking the right question. It's actually difficult to understand lymphoma, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and leukemia. The thing is, is that you can understand breast, right? It comes from breast. The, the cancer from, comes from the breast or colon cancer comes from the colon. Right. But non-Hodgkin's lymphoma comes from the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system is always in the background. You and I don't know about it yeah. because it's constantly fighting off infections like viruses and bacteria, but it never manifests itself. It never becomes enlarged. However, there are these small lymph nodes that are throughout your whole body that you can't feel that when there is cancer within them, they tend to grow larger. Oh, so a non-Hodgkin's okay. lymphoma is a cancer that starts within those very lymph nodes. Okay, and does it co- create pain? So it can. So it depends on where, which lymph nodes are involved. So say a neck lymph node uh, that's growing larger and is involved with follicular, follicular lymphoma, which is one of the most common slow-growing kind of lymphoma, probably won't cause pain. But say it's in the abdomen, then it might cause abdominal pain. Mm-hmm. So it can cause pain depending on where that lymph node is. And has treatment changed over the years? Yes, actually, tremendously so. So for, the, for a long time, we were entirely reliant on chemotherapy, maybe a little bit of immune therapy to put patients into remission. But these are incurable cancers. So unfortunately, mm. we know whatever treatments that we give them, it will come back, sometimes in many months, many years, decades even, but it does recur. So when it now recurs in 2018, we have many non-chemotherapy options that put patients back into remission for many years. So that's what's the exciting part here today. One drug that we, uh, we like to use, that I like to use very often, is Alicopa, um, which is a PI3 kinase inhibitor, which basically is a, a targeted drug that goes after the lymphoma molecules. And it does, uh, and patients do very well on it. But of course, each patient to speak to their doctor about what's the right treatment for them. Is this new? Is, it, is this medication new? Yes, uh, there, uh, this medication was just recently approved by the FDA in the last year. Oh my gosh. And uh, we were told that you have uh, new cases in Florida, 135,000, and that there have been 45,000 deaths from this. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I think the unfortunate part is, is that as, as, a, as a lymphoma specialist and other general oncologists, both, we tend to regularly see these patients. And we all have patients that pass away from this disease. but you'll find that now patients with follicular lymphoma are living longer than ever, better than ever, basically healthy, normal lives, especially with these non-chemotherapeutic options. So it's honestly an exciting time to be an oncologist. Uh, with, a, with only one minute, doctor, it uh, uh, sounds like you're giving us a, a hopeful message. I, I don't want our listeners to be left hanging. So is there a website they can go get more information? Yes, there are two great websites. One from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, LLS, LLS.org and the other allbloodcancers.org but the best person to go to is their local oncologist who will be happy to answer all their tough questions for them good advice Uh, Dr. Muhammad Hassan Imam thank you so much for being on the show with us today it was my pleasure thank you you're welcome we'll be right back
Pro will get you equipped for anything with a John Deere 5045E utility tractor. At only $159 per month, you can add the perfect attachment to dig it, plow it, grade it, anything. Request a quote at agproco.com and get equipped for anything. Subject to approved installment credit with John Deere Financial. 20% down payment required. Taxes, freight, setup, and delivery charges could increase monthly payment. See dealer for details. Howdy folks, RL here for Dairy Queen. As fall approaches, it seems our taste buds change gears and things like char-grilled hot dogs with chili come to mind. Also, I got a crow about our most tasty grilled and crispy chicken breast sandwiches. And everybody knows about our world-famous chicken tenders and pepper cream gravy. Mmm, good. But you might just want a banana split or a blizzard for dessert. Dairy Queen, Silver Springs, where we always treat you like kings and queens. AccuSleep offers a safe and effective medical option for those who suffer from sleep disorders of all kinds. AccuSleep makes restoring healthy sleep patterns possible. No medication, no surgery, just good sound sleep. Mend your sleep so you can stop counting sheep. Experience restorative sleep at AccuSleep, the acupuncture sleep clinic in Ocala by calling 352-615-5566. What do I do now? After 911, don't worry, call Fakuri. Fakuri Medical and Chiropractic, treating auto injuries for over 32 years. Same day appointments, immediate medical attention, all under one roof. Don't worry, call Fakuri. Go to bestinjurycare.com. All auto insurances are accepted. Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to take your call. Car accident, don't worry, call Fakuri. Bestinjurycare.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. Our tractor services include bush hog, disking, front end loader, box blade, and stump grinding. We also have zero turn mowers for the smaller paddocks, aisleways, fence rows, and lawn care. Fence row spraying is also available for weed control. We are licensed and insured. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. Or online at Gene G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. Gene Powell Pasture Mowing. Gene is a proud United States veteran. Honey Baked Ham has a new tailgate pack special. For just $19.99, a half a pound of delicious Honey Baked Ham slices, a half a pound of smoked or roast turkey slices, one pound deli side, choose from broccoli bacon bliss, loaded potato salad, etc. Plus one dozen King's Hawaiian Rolls. How about doubling your order for $39.99? Call 352-861-0011. Or come to Honey Baked Ham of Ocala, 2709 Southwest 17th Avenue, Ocala. Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6. Friends, countrymen, tourists, and Ocalans, lend me your ears. Hey, speaking of ears, there is an opportunity for you to help feed and provide good maintenance, housing, and medical care for Marion County's rescued big cats, bears, monkeys, and other disabled or unreleasable wild and exotic animals. Take a tour on Wednesdays or Saturdays of the Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary. Call 352-266-2859. The Endangered Animal Rescue Sanctuary is affectionately known as ears. All right, thank you very much. Me. That was me, Robin. I'm thanking yes, myself. It was. Thank you, Larry, so much for that. That was great. <laughs> um, you are from Wisconsin. Yes, I am. Did you know, uh, th- remember last week or two weeks ago, there was a letter in the news that uh, was an, had an anonymous author, like nobody knew who wrote it, and it was uh, somebody from the White House. Remember all that stuff? Oh, yeah. And, and one of the things, the, a follow-up letter or an article, I should say, or story, was how anonymous letters are narrowed down so we can sort of figure out who wrote it, okay? Oh, cool. So I don't have that story. I don't, oh. mean, I don't know who wrote that, and I guess I guess the whole Kavanaugh thing uh, cover, overshadowed that other story, right? I think so. I but think so. if that writer had been from Wisconsin, mm-hmm. then I have some of the Wisconsinisms that would be the telltale sign that that person wrote this letter. Nice. <laughs> now, you are from Wisconsin, and I don't hear you saying a whole lot of these things. Oh, okay. Some of them I do, but uh, mm-hmm. my big one with you is a whole nother. Yeah, that's the one. And I think that, that comes from you. That tickles your funny bone. <laughs> it does. It does. So let me ask you this. I'm trying to think if I ever heard you or your mother or anybody else from your Wisconsin Mm-hmm. clan tribe mm-hmm. say you betcha oh yeah yes oh yeah oh yeah you betcha you betcha yep yep that's a pr- that's prevalent up there and so hmm. you betcha and so, so what would be the equivalent like here in, in ocala what would people say instead of you betcha what would they say okay 
Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So okay. So okay replaces you betcha. Yeah. What, what was interesting? We were watching. Uh, we're latecomers to this, but we were watching. Um, don't tell me, Downton Abbey. Yeah. And the writer of Downton Abbey is Julian. What's his name? Crow? Fellows. 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 And so he has to be really careful in when you're writing a period piece, right, from the early 20th century, to not use collo- colloquialisms from today. Yes. Right? So he has to use colloquialisms, or whatever that word is, from yeah. back then, right? Right. And I think the word okay wasn't around yet at that point, or because or, he never uses the word. And plus it's in Britain, so that would have a whole new set of... Oh, uh, yeah, it does. It does. A whole, so... Because instead of saying that was mean, they say that was harsh. <laughs> I've never heard him say that, that was, was harsh. Mean. That yeah, was I like, harsh. I like that. Yeah, I think I'm hmm. going to incorporate that word. Can you use that one? Yeah, that was harsh. <laughs> and then people look at me like, oh, okay. So you what betcha is uh, it's one. Okay. So what do you call, uh, oh, you know, I'll do it a different way. What do you call the light that tells you it's you got to stop or go? The traffic light. You call it a traffic light? Now I do. I used to call it a stoplight or a stop and go light. Stop and go light. Bing, bing, but, bing. That's what it says here, here is a Wisconsinism. A light. Yeah. A stop, stop and go, go light. light. Yeah. Well, that is interesting. Because it was never hanging over the middle of the road. It was always on a pole on the corner. So like here's stop and go light. Here's something from uh, my childhood that I, I remember consciously trying to change it for myself. I called the, the, the traffic light. I called it a, a street light. Oh, and then I also called the light on top of the pole that came on. That was the signal to go home. Uh-huh. <laughs> the that light, was a street. Light. That was a street light. Well, in your world, in my world, they were both street lights because they're all on the street and they're all lights. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, later on in life, I decided, you know what? I got to differentiate between that street light that turns red, yellow, and green, mm-hmm. and this street light, which only has like an amber color at nighttime. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. so I so, called the traffic light. I guess I got that from somebody. Mm-hmm. All right, so here's another one. The term that you use in Wisconsin for an invention of the Kohler Company in 1888. A faucet. <laughs> no. Um, th- this says bubbler. Co- oh, yes, yes. That was all bubblers. So what's a bubbler then? It's a uh, round bowl. And in the middle, it has a tiny little round thing coming up and then the wa- with holes. And then the water bubbles out. It's not like a water fountain where you push the thing and the water comes out. Oh, I love those things. I know what you're talking about. The yeah. bubbler is, is constantly moving, you know. We had that in the parks in, well, on Long Island. I don't know mm-hmm. about in the city, but on Long Island, we had those in the parks. Oh, we had them everywhere. We never had the Did you have fountains. to step on something to turn it on? No, outside they were always on. They were always in, on. But in the building, you had to step on. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had, to, we had them in the... You put your hands around it like the picture you drew. <laughs> that's one. The Robin and the Giant. Yeah, and that's, little that's around right. the bubbler. That's right. That's right. Um, so yeah, but we. But I, you had them. We had them, but I, I guess we called them water fountains. I don't remember oh, okay. calling it a bubbler, but that. No, we always called them bubbler. I like that name though, bubbler. It, it bubbles. It's it's different than a water fountain. Gosh, I, I, I would love to go back to those times. I would love to be able to live like that. I don't. I don't necessarily mean the times. Maybe when I retire, I'll just get a bicycle and ride around looking for bubblers. <laughs> Good morning, you're on the air. Good morning. <laughs> the traffic light story. Uh, in the city of Syracuse, there is a uh, mostly Irish uh, uh, inhabited uh, neighborhood called Tipperary Hill. Uh-huh. And the traffic light on the corner, uh, on, on one this one particular corner, uh, it it is reversed from every other traffic light. The green is on the top. Oh, no. Don't you hate when it's wow. backwards? Yeah, I know. I mean, to this wow. day, that uh, um, I mean, they, they would uh, they would come out. Uh, every time the, 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 uh, the city would come out and try to change the light so it matched all the other lights in Syracuse, uh, the, the people would gather around and, and chase them off with rocks and such. Oh my Good gosh! For them. Uh, oh my them. gosh! Yeah, there's there's a statue on Tipperary Hill, uh, e- e- uh, even to this day that that commemorates that. I think that traffic light has finally been changed so that it conforms with all the other traffic lights, but. 
They did uh, it's it. one of the enduring legends of Syracuse. Oh, that's funny. They did it in the middle of the night. That's what they did. Yeah, I bet they did. Those, yeah. those nuts with the rocks. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, have a good day. That's Thanks. a pretty cool story. <laughs> I like that. Thank you, Jim. Uh, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning. Uh, those water bubblers were really, I mean, you, you could keep your water pistol loaded up all day long. You know, you didn't have to go home. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I, I'm going to mention something that uh, Robin's going to know about Mitchell Street. And uh, it would come and you to hear things like, uh, oh, maybe like, uh, say, throw the kid out the window, it's hat. Yes. What does that mean? Yeah. Throw the kid you out do. the window, it's hat? <laughs> yeah. A tat. A T A T. A tap. No, no, a cap. C A P. A cap. So Throw the kid, kid out, out the window, window a, cap. a cap. What does that mean? A cap. Well, the kid, you know, needed a cap because it was hot or something outside. Oh, throw the kid out, out the, the window, window a, cap. a cap. Oh, I thought you were throwing the kid out the window. No, 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 it's cap. So you wouldn't say throw the cap out the window to the kid. The kid no. <laughs> you no, say not, throw no, the not kid. Not Mitchell Street up there. Throw uh-huh. the kid out the window. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is so confusing. <laughs> yeah, they had nice stores there, and, and my mother used to uh, decorate the windows of a couple oh, really? of those stores on Mitchell Street. Yeah, she's very creative. Thank you, Hugh. All right, here's one okay. you do all the time. I'm sorry. Yes, I do. It says, ever notice how we apologize for everything in Wisconsin? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I have seen you do this. For those l- ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a, a grocery store story with Robin. So we're in the grocery store, and people drive shopping carts the way they drive their cars. They they are so rude and crazy, okay? Uh, So this guy bumps into Robin with his shopping cart, and Robin says, oh, I'm sorry. And I say, wait a minute. (laughs) Oh, 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 and and P.S., the guy says, oh, no problem. And I'm thinking, wait a minute here. (laughs) Wait a minute here. He hit you. You hit him. To him, I said to him, you hit her. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you hit her. What's the matter with you? Gosh. You didn't like hearing from me. Nobody likes hearing from me. You know what it is? I forget that I'm big, and, mm-hmm. and then when I just talk to people, they're like, ah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not even from Wisconsin, but I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's, here's something. Now, Glenn Beck does this all the time. Uh, I don't know where he's from, but he does this yeah. all the time. He'll say, we'll be right back after a quick break. Well, the breaks are all the exact same length. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so you don't take a quick break. You ever take a quick shower? Yeah, no, I try, but it never But do you say that? You say, I'm going to take a quick shower. No. I'll be back real quick. Oh, I say that. I'll quick? be back okay. real quick, yeah. yeah. Do you say real quick once? I'll be back real quick. Can you come here? Turns into, can you come here real quick once? Do you ever say that expression? Not real once. Qu- no, okay. Can you come back real quick? Okay. But not once. I never <laughs> use the word once. Maybe do, I do. Do you ever I say, what's a snow day? <laughs> no. That's a funny one. No, what's we a snow? know what's a snow day. Um, oh, I see. Being facetious. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. now I got it. See? Ding. Uh, let's see. Instead of just asking a question or leaving it at that, we second guess ourselves and end with, or no. Oh, yes, you do this, too. I could be wrong. Like, you'll, you'll do that one. you say, the sun is out. Well, I could be wrong. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can be confident about some things. <laughs> Today is my birthday, I, th- I think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some things it's okay to be sure about, right? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. You think? I think. <laughs> <laughs> or no. Or maybe not. Yeah. How, oh my gosh, don't do that. Don't say, or maybe not. Don't even do mm-hmm. that. Don't want to offend the people like unless that. It's, unless you're the weather man. Then you say, mm-hmm. it's going to be hot tomorrow. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, now that gives you license to say, or maybe not. <laughs> okay. Uh, instead of sorry, <laughs> sometimes you say whoopsie daisies. <laughs> Do you? I don't, but maybe, you know. Whoopsie daisies. Maybe during my grandparents, maybe they said whoopsie daisies. Huh. Whoopsie daisies. I'll bet you. I'll bet they said that. <laughs> I'll bet you. There you go. I'll bet you. <laughs> How about ope? Did you say ope? Ope. Instead like of sorry? Ope. 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 Nope. nope. Uh, like, like you bump into somebody. Ope. No. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oopsie daisy, whoopsie daisies. Whoopsie daisy, I'm going to have to make a mental note. 
<laughs> uh, when temperatures reach negative 15 degrees or colder, do you, what do you say? What does somebody from Wisconsin say? Negative 15 degrees. It's freezing. And, and P.S. Hugh, if you're listening, I hear you do this every single time it's cold here. <laughs> he will call up and he will say, cold enough for you? Yes. All the time. <laughs> Cold enough for you? That's right. I'm not so sure what you mean by that, but now I understand it. It has nothing to do with the real question. It's a Wisconsinism. That's right. Cold enough for you? Cold, cold enough for you? Yeah. Uh, let's see. This place is different for everyone. If it's where you jumped off a raft into a sparkling Wisconsin lake, it's where you roasted marshmallows around a crackling fire, telling spooky stories with your family. It's where you watched fireworks and lit sparklers on the 4th of July night. It's where you fish and jet ski and pontoon and canoe. It's a cabin or a cottage where your best memories are made. Do you know where it is, Robin? If you're living in Wisconsin, it's all of those things happen up north. Up north. Everything up happens north. up north. That's right. Is exactly. that true? Yeah, because that's a, all the lakes and the woods are and everything is. You're going up north to a cabin. You're going up north to the lake. You're always going up north. <laughs> but if you go from Milwaukee down to Chicago, you're going down south. Yeah, but we're never going up north to go to cabins or to fish or anything like that. It's always up north. Always up north. Yeah. What if you live up north? Then where do you go for the cabin? I guess you stay there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, any more in here that, nah, that we Bruce. could have fun with? Um, I guess that's all I have here. No, those are fun. <laughs> Good morning. You're on the air. <laughs> Is it, it's going to be 92 today. Is it going to be hot enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you know, and then on the Weather Channel, it's always, uh, oh, it's uh, the rain is coming down over there. Well, it's not going up. It's got to be coming down. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Or it's 84, degree, 84 degrees outside. Oh, well, yeah, we can't. Exactly. <laughs> well, no. My Thank aunt, you, Hugh. My aunt and uncle, they lived in, or my mother's aunt and uncle, my great aunt and uncle lived in Kiwani, and... They would always say something and say, and so, are we going to the, is it okay for you to put your coat on today and so, or something? Oh, and, and the words and, and so. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, really nice. I, I love that. I can hear their voices. My mother would use, something. my mother it was from New York, of course, and she would say seen instead of saw. Oh, did you seen it? Yeah. She said, I seen, I seen, I seen my family member. I, 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 I seen your friend yesterday, you know. Oh, okay. I seen, I seen your fam. I seen your friend yesterday. Uh-huh. And I would say, Mom, you didn't see my friend. You saw my friend. Oh, you corrected her. Well, not for long. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't get chastised, but I realized after a while, ah, oh, that's just the way people speak. People exactly. Speak differently. Well, do you all have a, a Americanism? <laughs> you have any Americanisms that you said? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Because I you're very know. literal, you always make sure to formulate everything <laughs> properly. That's interesting. I don't know. Um, or Long Islandism, I think. No. Oh, okay. So, so um, w one of the things I noticed it was in the accents. My, uh, I mean, it's a s very small area where I grew up, and yet somebody from the Bronx had a completely different accent from somebody from Brooklyn. It was kind of weird. Oh my! Yeah, well, it's community though. Yeah, I guess. Community. Really sure. living in. Okay, kids. Anybody, okay. anybody want to eat? Anybody hungry? Ooh, that would be a good thing. All right. Anybody great. hungry? Okay. Joe gave me some gift cards to give out to all of you. Yes. So I would like to give out two for Freddy's frozen custards and steak burgers. And then you will also get two ice cream cone cards. Yes. Which you can also get it in a cup. You don't, and these are custards, by the way. Yes. All you Wisconsin people. That's right. So they're two, custard. Two custards and, and two um, meals. meals. Now, the card says compliments to the kids. So it looks like it's for a kid's meal. But Joe worked the deal with them. As long as it has the WOCA embossed logo on it, then it's good for an adult meal. And Robert and I used them yesterday, and they actually absolutely honored them for adult meals. So you will get two adult meals and two um, uh, Ice, uh, cards for cones. the custard. Yeah, and cone you get it in a, a dish. Cone or a uh, dish. Or, yeah, dish. Mm -hmm. There yeah. you go. All right. So if you would like them, you need to call me right now. I'll take your call off the air. Robin will actually speak to you. The number is 622-9622, 622-WOCA. If Robin answers the call, then you got the... The, 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 the food and if she doesn't then try next time we'll be right back
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. 1.30 this afternoon Eastern Time is when the Senate Judiciary Committee is scheduled to vote on Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. All 11 Republicans are expected to vote yes, with all 10 Democrats voting no. Connecticut Democrat Richard Blumenthal says, I believe we have a responsibility to subpoena at the very least Mark Judge before we move to vote. Mark Judge is the friend accused of being in the room when Judge Kavanaugh is alleged to have sexually assaulted Christine Ford. He sent a letter read by committee chairman Chuck Grassley. I never saw Brad act in a manner Dr. Ford describes. I am knowingly submitting this letter under penalty of... uh, felony. The committee votes just a recommendation. A full Senate vote is expected Tuesday or Wednesday after procedural votes over the weekend. Fox News. We report. You decide. When posting on most job sites, you get candidates. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director. I'm the sales director you're looking for. But when you post on Indeed.com, you get the candidates just right for you. I'm a sales director with an MBA, over 10 years experience who's also fluent in Japanese. With Indeed, you can add screener questions for a less time-consuming route to your short list of qualified candidates. Arigato. Hiring's better when you've got your short list. Save time on hiring when you post a job on Indeed. Get started today at Indeed.com slash hire. Wesley had IRS troubles. They told me I owed them $43,000. It got really bad. Coming after my house, my car, I seriously thought that I was going to lose everything. Wesley called Optima Tax Relief. Oh, they were great people. Optima Tax. They know what they're doing. Optima Tax Relief came through with flying colors. I saved an incredible amount of money. Call Optima Tax Relief. Don't trust anybody else. Call Optima for a free consultation. Call 800-567-2261. 800-567-2261. Optima Tax Relief. Attention WOCA listeners. Do you or someone you know have an outgoing personality with great organizational skills? Well, WOCA is looking for a few good people to join our marketing reps team. You get to meet other great people and business leaders in our community. WOCA Radio offers flexible schedules, great income potential, and some really great fringe benefits, too. So if you enjoy talking to people and getting paid to do it, this may be the right choice for you. Apply within or send your resumes to careers at WOCA.com. The music and magic is Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat with lyrics and music by Tim Rice and Andrew Lloyd Webber. Now playing live on stage at the Ocala Civic Theater through September 30th. Now you can enjoy the family musical with huge dance numbers and a fresh, fun new look in this high-energy production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Call the Ocala Civic Theater today for your tickets. 352-236-2274. 352-236-2274. Here are today's headlines from the source WOCA. Two men were found shot at the edge of the Ocala National Forest near Alexander Springs yesterday, and it has prompted an investigation. The men were shot near County Road 445 and Forest Road 18 in Altoona yesterday afternoon, according to Sergeant Fred Jones, a spokesman for the Lake County Sheriff's Office, in an email he sent to the media. According to investigators, law enforcement got a call from someone driving along 445 near Alexander Springs. Springs, who thought they had seen somebody who was shot. When deputies arrived, they found two shooting victims near the area known by the community as Freak Creek. The victims, later airlifted to hospitals in the Orlando area, are both in stable condition. They were able to tell investigators they were shot by two other men along the roadway near the creek who were driving a small black SUV. Law enforcement is now asking for the community's help, saying anyone who has seen a black SUV driving in the area area that seemed out of place to please contact the Lake County Sheriff's Office. The Star Banner is reporting two suspects have been arrested, charged with aggravated child abuse and battery for allegedly beating four people, one of whom is an 11-year-old girl. The two suspects are identified as 18-year-old Brandon Azora Clanton and 18-year-old Julia Marie Napiontak. The report states that deputies with the Marion County Sheriff's Office went to Forest Corners Circle K store in response to a disturbance. The four people, who are 55, 48, 
47 and 11 years old, told the deputies they were assaulted by a man and a woman while in the parking lot. Surveillance video from the store shows the attacks. Deputies were able to identify the man as Clanton and the woman as Napiontic. Former First Lady Michelle Obama will be appearing at a voting rally today in South Florida. The event is being hosted by the organization When We All Vote. Kyle Learman is CEO. We're thrilled that uh, Michelle Obama is coming down to Miami today for a When We All Vote rally uh, to make sure that folks in Miami and across Florida and across the country are getting registered uh, and ready to vote. He says this is a nonpartisan event being held at the Watsko Center at the University of Miami. The event is free and open to the public, but tickets will be needed. The website to get tickets is whenweallvote.org slash events. So far, Red Tide has not affected plans for a major boat racing event in Clearwater this weekend. The Hooters Superboat National Championship races and associated events take place this weekend off Clearwater Beach. In spite of concerns about possible red tide irritation, Jason Bizell with the city of Clearwater says the weather is giving the beach a break. Luckily right now we have winds out of the east and they're projected to stay that way through the weekend to keep the bloom away from the shore. Bizell says city workers have been out at 5.30 every morning to clear the shoreline of dead fish and that will continue through the weekend. Gordon Bird, Tampa. The Florida Times Union newspaper is reporting that police in Palatka fatally shot an armed domestic battery suspect during a confrontation. The newspaper reports that a woman called Palatka police early yesterday to report that she had been battered. She met officers at a nearby store and told them what happened. The newspaper says that when she returned home, she called police and told them she saw the suspect sitting inside an SUV. When police arrived, they saw the vehicle leaving and pulled it over. Police say two officers approached and noticed the driver had a handgun. They asked him to drop the gun several times. Authorities say when he did not drop the gun, they shot him. The suspect tried driving away but crashed into other vehicles. He was taken to a hospital where he died. He wasn't their first choice, but the Florida Chamber of Commerce is now backing Republican Ron DeSantis in the race for governor. He spoke at a forum in Orlando where DeSantis told business leaders Democrat Andrew Gillum could destroy Florida's reputation as a low-tax state. He's running on the biggest tax increase in history. He has a history of of advocating for higher taxes. He, He supports higher federal taxes and imposes the tax cuts that we did last year. And since Gillum is an outspoken critic of Donald Trump, DeSantis says Florida won't be able to get anything out of Washington if he is elected. If you're traveling through Miami International Airport, you might notice a few new travelers. The airport this week announced a new therapy dog program, dubbed the Miami Hound Machine, saying five canine dogs will be walking the concourses to help greet and calm anxious travelers. The dogs will visit the busiest areas of the airport from Thursdays to Mondays. Their locations will be shared on social media with the hashtag Miami Hound Machine for guests wishing to seek them out. The dogs have at least six months of experience and have been certified by the Alliance of Therapy Dogs. Miami-Dade Aviation Director Lester Sola says traveling can sometimes be stressful and hopes the new program will keep passengers at ease. The University of Central Florida is extending its offer of in-state tuition to students who came to school from Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands after Hurricane Maria. The Orlando-based university's trustees voted yesterday to waive out-of-state fees for students from those U.S. territories through 2023. The trustees also expanded the offer to any students from those islands who already are in the pipeline at Florida's 28 public community colleges. Students must remain continuously enrolled in order to qualify. UCF's tuition and fees for Florida residents is $6,368 per year compared to $22,478 per year for non-Florida residents. A new AARP Foundation study showing one in three adults 45 and older is lonely. National Good Neighbor Day, which is today, couldn't be coming at a better time. Spokeswoman Lisa Marsh Ryerson urged everyone to participate. 
It's uh, good for our lonely and isolated neighbors, but it's really good for our health as well. Participate with us. Reach out to your neighbor. I hope it's a, a step in a lifetime practice of connection. And to combat loneliness, Ryerson says there's no substitute for human interaction, and that includes technology. She also recommended engaging in moderate exercise and said that adults who engage in sex once a week are less likely to be lonely. Red tide in the Gulf of Mexico has killed hundreds of turtles, manatees, and dolphins, not to mention tons of dead fish that have washed up on Florida's beaches. But Bill McRae at the State Fish and Wildlife Commission says they have managed to save some of the sea life. A little bit more positive side, both with sea turtles and manatees, we can rescue them and they do do pretty well in rehab facilities if we get to them in time. And so far, 12 manatees and upwards of 50 sea turtles have been rescued. FWC is keeping fishing restrictions imposed because of red tide in place. Snook and redfish will remain catch and release only until May, anywhere south of Wikiwachi on the Gulf Coast. A powerboat racing event in Clearwater will go on as scheduled this weekend, despite red tide. Publix is expanding its headquarters and adding 700 new jobs over the next decade. Publix CEO and President Todd Jones announced yesterday that the company would expand its headquarters in Lakeland, hiring hundreds of new employees by the end of 2027. In the past years, Publix has seen significant growth entering three additional states, more than doubling its annual sales and opening more than 500 new stores. The grocery store chain has also added about 70,000 associates. Governor Rick Scott was among the guests in attendance at yesterday's announcement. And finally, space station astronauts received a special delivery from a Japanese capsule named White Storm.